joining uh, our last session. Um, okay, so I haven't got the camera on because it takes away from the view. Um, so it's a little bit impersonal, but anyway, we'll get started. So what we're gonna look at today is how we've actually uh, dealt with the biggest challenges around spatial, spacing and jumbling student practice. Where does this come from? So basically it comes from in term two this year, we trialed a study journal. The purpose of studying the, doing the trial of the study journal was to overcome an organizational pattern that we're noticing with our students from seven to 10. The fact is that students study in all sorts of different places and spaces and books and so forth and don't have any coherence. Also what we wanted to do is we wanted to see if students use templates whether, whether having a blank page was too much for some to overcome and uh, if they actually used a resource. What we found though was at the end of the term, um, we noticed a fairly big relationship with three groups of students and their actual results. And so this is a generalization. And yes, there are students within both groups in, or in three groups that they quite conform, but this is what we found. So we found with our low level uh, students that their frequency is poor, that their study doesn't actually meet the recommended duration. We aim for study to be between 20 or 30 minute intervals. They never use spacing or interleaving and they will only study what they immediately are doing in that class at that point in time. Most surprisingly though, is that they don't use the resources. This group typically do not use the textbook, do not use quizzes, do not use flashcards, do not use anything that the teacher is giving them. In essence, nearly all of them will try to come up with their own question. The issue is that question reflects their pretty poor level of understanding. So they're practicing what they already know. And this group is not using the resources that often we are trying to deliver. You think about all the time that you're in creating materials, often you're creating additional materials for this group of students. What's interesting, this group of students don't use it. They're not using the extras that we're creating for them. And the issue is that their study, and if they do it, so that's a, that's a caveat, if they do it, whatever they're doing isn't actually helping them. In essence, it's creating illusion of competency. The one area of a square that they're doing, they're ticking it off as a compliance measure. <coughs> Middle of the road. Generally, these are your high B, mid-level B, uh, sorry, high C, mid-level B students. What's interesting, they will use the available resources. However, they struggle to space out their work over time. And we often find these students, they do really well in term one, but as the course goes on and as the year progresses, we often find that this group performance decays over time because they're not going back. They're not, they're not going back to earlier stuff. The other thing that we find with this group as well is that they don't, um, actually mark their work. They don't check, they don't mark, and they rarely take advantage of the solutions. And so what's happening is two things. This group is neither spreading out and, and, and looking at learning as a long-term solution. Also, this group is also not actually um, doing any metacognitive process. They're not engaging in any form of feedback. And also this group, the reason why this group would generally struggle with problem solving is because their practice isn't actually practicing the ability to bring in multiple bits of work that is required to solve problems. Okay, so the issue here is these guys are practicing, their, their, their practice is actually mirroring their level of achievement. They're practicing the stuff that will be at the initial phases of the exam, but not the stuff towards the end. 
the last group, the high achievers. I thought these guys would, would buck the resources that we give them and basically do their own thing because a lot of these guys have an attitude that they're often better than others. What's interesting, I thought these guys would try to come up with their own stuff. These guys don't. These, these students just follow the advice and they just use the resources. They are eating often the resources up that we design for our low achieving students. They're taking additional opportunities that we are designing for other groups of students and this is making this group perform better. Importantly, these, this particular group marks their work, checks whether they're right or wrong. Okay, they actually get, you see red ticks on their work and often they start, they're good at spreading out their study. They're, they're, they are, they're, this group here is still spreading. But what's really interesting, these guys are still probably on average doing 20 minutes a session. They're being very efficient. They just find the questions as quickly as possible. And basically they're just getting the job done as quickly as possible. These guys are studying often around about three times a week on average, and they're doing 20 minutes each bit. And these guys, we, we find that um, they're on top of the ball because they're practice. And so what we want to focus on is that um, here, um, what we're looking at is, so Emily uh, Hartwig and Roa, the last two work is exceptional. Uh, Melinda Hartwig's work is phenomenal. I highly recommend anything that she produces. It's really, really great. She's done some work with John Dunlofsky and, and so forth. She has really great collaborations. So the issue here is that clearly spacing and interleaving leads to better results. It also means that any study is likely to endure longer than the massing. So these guys, they actually get a return on their investment. So their work actually persists longer than the masses. So in essence, they're getting a greater return. And also it improves their metacognitive process. They're, they're more likely in charge. But the problem is that we often find students who cram and mass are really overconfident. And the issue is that the overconfidence sort of conditions them to continue cramming. The problem is with spacing and interleaving, it's hard. And because of that difficulty, students will often under or pretty much on the money assess where they're at. So from a, a viewpoint of a student, they're, they're gonna be assessing themselves less favorably if they use spacing and interleaving. So they're gonna assess themselves in a much more uh, rigorous fashion. They're gonna have a lower assessment of their future success. Often it's gonna be correct, whereas massing builds this inflated sense. So again, we're working against basically um, the natural th thought process of being conditioned. So the other thing too, is that spacing often reduces short-term performance, okay? And that's really key. What they've found is that students will do generally in the initial stages of spacing in the first two to four weeks, they are likely to do, if you give a student a practice test after four weeks and you have a crammer and you have a spacer, the crammer will always get a better result. There's two reasons why. One, spacing takes time, it's a process. It delivers long-term return. Cramming works for about three to four weeks of work. If you only have three to four weeks of work, cramming is the number one strategy. Because if you're gonna give a test after four weeks, it's very unlikely that you're gonna use that work again. The issue is that when in that three to four week time period, if you think about the work of James Clear, he talks about the valley of latent potential. The student has been delivering and investing in their spacing, but yet the return one is going to be lower and the feeling of the return will also be lower. So why do students give up? 
well, the, the value of latent potential, they're not seeing the return of their investment. So they give up, which is why I don't go to the gym. I don't go to the gym because it takes time to actually change your physical stature of your body. And the same thing happens here. If, if our students don't get generally in the, in, the, in the training that they've been given in the world that they exist in, if they're not given a fairly immediate response, they give up. So this is what we've done. So keeping this in mind, we've used, we use a Jacaranda textbook. It has this online thing called Jack Plus. What it does, it gives us the facility to use all their pre-made questions and answers. So this is what we've done. We've actually brought in once a week, a space interleaved practice set of questions. One teacher per year level comes up with the questions and we aim for 20 retrieval type knowledge questions. We're not after problem solving, we're not under comprehension, we're not under any sort of high level cognitive process here. We're just about practice, practice, practice. What we do though, is we try to find linkages between stuff in semester one to what they're working on at the moment. But the beauty of this is that one teacher can do this, select the questions and then farm it out to as many classes as who, that are linked. So I can link this out to eight or nine classes. I do the work and then I push it out to 220 students in eight or nine classes in five to 10 minutes and it's done. So from this point of view, we are not reinventing the wheel. We don't have time to reinvent the wheel. We're using a resource that we have already bought. This is not any extra work. We're not paying any extra money. This is a resource that we've already paid for that comes with our textbook. What we like about it is obviously that from a work perspective, one person's work gets multiplied nine times. Also it's self-marking with already made solutions that I haven't had to come up with. This is the feedback. So this is my year seven class. And you can sort of see, unfortunately, when I did this, it should be starting from week <coughs> two on the left and then going to the right, but it's gone the other way, I apologize. But what we started to see is on the way through, we're seeing the students who are practicing. If they have a fully red bar, it means they haven't practiced, they haven't done it. What's really interesting, the students who don't do this and don't practice, guess what their results are likely to be? Poor. But at least we have an artifact that actually I can sit there and go, your son, and I've communicated this to the parents and the head of faculty communicated this to the parents, this is what we we're doing. We set it out once a week, we told the parents what was coming, how it was gonna be used. And we can see that there's a student in here who hasn't done very much work. Student hasn't played the game, student hasn't used the resource and no surprises that student is probably gonna do pretty poorly, okay? But what it does is it provides us this. Now, I apologize, I blanked out too much. Each of the rows here are a strand. So the top row is numeracy, the second row is measurement, the third row is, um, I forget, the fourth row is geometry, the fifth row is probability, and the sixth row is statistics. So you can, so this is an individual student. And what we can see with this student is this is him on the far right in week six on the 21st of August compared to the 24th of the seventh. We're seeing a general improvement in the student over time. We're seeing more green than we're seeing red. And the reason why is because we've been attacking the gap over and over and over again. This has replaced weekend homework, is, is a focused weekend study period. So we have a few minutes left. Uh, does anyone have any questions? So JB has said, are there available, available examples of the resources? Okay, so basically we're in the process of actually building a study journal that we will actually send to the printers for next year. So the schools who are in the Learners Toolkit project, when we've finalized our study journal, so the study journal will have templates because we find that students need templates to get started. There's gonna be some pre-made examples and some other things. 
We've found that um, some, for example, math sections need to be a bit bigger than say English sections, because English is one of those things that they often students don't always study for. If they're doing an assignment, the question is, why would they be doing study? However, for an exam, there are certain key strategies. So what we're doing is we're building in, we're actually building a study journal that can be published, it can be printed, it can be public printed by a school for free. And that's all they have to do is staple it if they just wanted like a, you know, a cheap and easy study journal. But we're gonna get it published and printed at the same cost that you can basically buy a five subject study book at Officeworks, actually cheaper. So a five subject study book at Officeworks um, retails at $14, but the wholesale price is about six, which gives you an idea on how much you could probably get a really high quality study journal printed for. Um, we are defining down what the templates look like because we need slightly different templates for slightly different subjects. But that's sort of, that's, that's a work in action. And we're hoping to have something by the end of this year, JB. I hope that answers your question. But um, as I know that your school is a learner's toolkit school, I think, um, when the research portal opens, schools will be, we will be able to put this up on the portal and then schools will be able to go, all right, let's look at this study journal. We like this, this, and this. We don't like that and that and that. Cut, 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 cut. And then they can use it and do whatever they want with themselves. Anyway, if there aren't any more questions, I'll stop the recording. Uh, thank you very much for today. A reminder that our, um, I'll put my video back on. A reminder that our, I'm not sure why it's doing this. It's not working today. A reminder that our videos will be on our YouTube uh, channel, but we will also notify you via email when they appear. Thank you very much for your time today. And we really appreciate you spending the morning with us. Thank you very much.